Now this illustration deals with grounded systems in accordance with 250.32b. Now notice the building to the left is where a main switchgear is installed in this building. I'd like to point out it could be a centrally located building in the center with feeders going out to maybe four buildings surrounding it, or it could be located in a substation or located in a, a main building area, like in a basement or somewhere. But, but notice it's a feeder routed over to building uh, number one there. So building number one, the panel board, switch gear, whatever's there, has to have an isolated neutral bar as you see in the illustration. The equipment grounding bar is uh, bonded to the enclosure and connected into your electrode or electrode systems that is designed and selected from 250.50, 250.52, and installed by 250.53 mainly. So we know we pick up those sections 250.50, 250.52, and 250.53 for the grounding electrode or system. Now, the main thing we point out, we have a 225 amp main. Table 250.122 requires a number four equipment ground routed to the bar that's bonded to the enclosure and connected into your electrode uh, system or electrode. Now, notice that's in step one of the boxed-in information. But you also have to calculate it to see if, the neutral requires a larger conductor than number four, which we uh, will review. But notice you have a 62 amp calculated load, neutral, 75 degrees C terminals. So that'd be a number six. And we could use a number six for the neutral bar and, and supplied with number six from the building number one, but we would need a number four route it over to the grounded bar that's connected into the uh, electrode electrode system. And then if we had four conductors terminating to the main in that building number one, we'd need a number two grounding electrode conductor if it connected to, uh, say, the structural steel or terminated to a water pipe system that was an electrode in accordance with 250.52A1 uh, and 10 feet or more of it was in the earth. But if that wasn't the case, and we're just saying this, and you connected it to a driven rod, it only need to be number six, the grounding electrode, in accordance with 250.66. And people say, you mean tell me if that was a, a, a 600 amp or a 1,000 amp service, number six is all I would need? Yes, that's correct. Uh, if that was the only electrode you had. If you had a concrete encased electrode, it'd be number four by 250.66B. And if a ground ring encircled the building, then you say it was number two, then you'd need number uh, two uh, to, uh, to it, see. So you, you see how many electrodes that are present in accordance with 250.52A through 7, and mainly we deal with 250.52A1 through A5 in many cases. So this figure 16-55 is pointing out the procedure for grounding the panel board in building number one, the sizing of the equipment ground procedure, table 250.122, based upon the overcurrent device, and the sizing of the neutral by 220.61, connected to the isolated neutral bar. So this illustration is illustrating just exactly how we would size the uh, equipment grounding conductor in step one. So. Uh, that's what figure 16-55 is illustrating. Based upon the 225 amp main in the panel board, we would need a number four equipment grinding conductor, and that would be the answer in the solution. And then the note says, be sure uh, to size the grinding electrode conductor 
uh, from table 250.66 as required by 250.32e. And I think we have covered the most important sections here in figure 16-55 concerning the grounded system in building number one.